Okay, um, hello everyone. So welcome to today's section and we have Hamed here. So we focus on the MasterCard scholarship, which Hamed won in 2020. He studied at the University of Edinburgh. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, it's Edinburgh, yeah. So, okay, yeah. So he will be giving us tips on how to answer the questions. But before he begins that, so Hamed, as in, what is the MasterCard scholarship about? Because this is like your scholarship. Uh, and so tell us what's the scholarship. Yeah, um, I think before I speak about um, the scholarship, I would like to just uh, mention that this is my personal experiences and in not any way related to like the MasterCard Foundation scholarship, you know, um, um, like, it's not like Quite, it's not related to like what the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship is probably saying, basically. So, yeah, so it's just, these are just my personal opinions. So just in case somebody is hearing and thinking that, oh, I made, I said this, and that's the final. No, these are just my personal experiences. Um, but yeah, the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship was really, really instrumental to my to my journey. And um, yeah, the, the kind of like partner um, institution so to uh, provide scholarship for people who probably would not be able to afford the scholarship or you know maybe you're a refugee or you're from a low income background i can't afford to study um you know uh to to study or to you know com complete a master's program so for example uh, they partner with the university of edinburgh uh, to run scholarship for specific courses and also currently they partner with university of their partner with university of cambridge and the uh, University of Oxford. And also they have a couple of scholarships also offered in Canada as well, and um, some other parts in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, yeah, so it's quite um, a, a broad and generous scholarship. And I mean, I think it's one of the best scholarships that you can ever get because uh, MasterCard Foundation Scholarship gives you everything, like a, 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 you know, a MacBook, like I got a MacBook from the scholarship, yeah. So once you get into like, the Edinburgh scholarship, you get a MacBook. Um, you don't need to worry about English test because if you don't, um, if you have not written an English test, you're gonna pay for that. Um, you also don't need to worry about, um, that is if you end up getting the scholarship basically. <laughs> if you don't get the scholarship for getting the English test. Um, so you get a monthly stipend, um, you get uh, your accommodation is covered. In fact, they will pick you from the airport to your accommodation. So, um, you know, um, they'll pay for your passport if you don't have one. Um, they'll pay for your TB test. Um, yeah, you get a, like, I don't want to keep mentioning, you get a COVID-19, you get a, you get a um, graduate transition stipend once you graduate. Um, you get access to reflective coaches and mentors who support you during your program. Um, opportunities within the program, like internship within the program itself. Um, you have opportunities to uh, have a, do a placement-based dissertation where you, if you happen to like, you wanna to travel to the country where you wanna run your placement-based dissertation, which is mostly uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, you get a, stipend to go your trips are covered um yeah there are many things that i would love to mention it's just so generous and you also have the opportunity to continue to engage when you become an alumni alumni like i get to work with the mastercard after graduating as a research assistant um in edinburgh like and i've had several other opportunities to continue to engage with the program um, so I would say like for me, the scholarship is life changing and really, really wants to help you grow and really wants to help you to change your circumstances. So it's like the best scholarship you can ever get. I'm telling you, like, is the best, like the best thing that happened to me in 2020 was actually winning the scholarship. And yeah, the offer numerous supports. Yeah, many. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ahmed. Like, <laughs> Is over the scholarship is just over generous. I mean, paying for someone's international passport. Huh? Yeah. They are, they are really, really generous. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to know, like, do they have to mandate you to return back to your country after the scholarship or you can stay back? Yeah, uh, um, yeah. I, I I think um 
it's not mandatory you you can decide but they encourage you to return back to your home country um so um i think i won't say mandatory i'll say encouraged um to return back to your home country i think that's the word i'm gonna use okay so it's not a clause that you have to return back to your country yeah but you're encouraged to okay, yeah, so. encouraged okay so um let's begin with the question so the first one is saying that reflecting on your life so far mm. so tell us how you meet the key selection criteria for the scholars program you should include information on your academic achievements and barriers to education you have faced so we are particularly welcoming application from those who identify as women refugees or displaced or those with disabilities Mm. as we understand that these groups face barrier to education so if you identify with any of these characteristics please mm. reflect this in your answer with as much detail as you're comfortable sharing and the word counts for the essay question between 50 to 250 word long so Ahmed I know you answered this question and then you yeah. got this scholarship so it's about to you now to tell someone who is thinking of applying to the MasterCard how should they write this essay to stand out to win this scholarship thank you very much. Um, so the first thing I will tell people go straight to the point. You don't have to start beating the bush. It's telling you, understand what is the question saying. So that's the first thing you need to know. What is this question saying? What is it like asking me to do? Um, so looking at the question, it says reflecting on your life so far, you know, tell us about your journey, you know, as a transformative leader, so so and so, and also like including your academics, you know. Um, potential or your academic record. So the first thing you need to do is to like, what are the things question is asking? So it's asking about your life journey. It's asking about how you've become a leader or transformative leader in your, in your community kind of thing. And it's also like talking about your academic, you know, prowess and all. Um, so in such question, you've already been able to understand the elements of the question basically. And then you, once you understand the element of the question, you start answering. So this is not the time because they said you should talk about your life journey. This is not the time to start saying that, oh, I fetch water, I suffered, I did all of these things. So in my case, this is how I saw the question. You know, within a line or two lines, I said, oh, I was born and raised. You know, I live, I, I live my, I live the majority of my years. You know, in a rural community. You know, um, I lost my mom at seven, and my dad became unemployed at the same time. I also stayed out of school for our academic term and my brother for our academic session. And this sparked my interest at the age of 15 to start advocating for educational issues and development issues in my community where I work as a teacher, you know. And uh, additionally, uh, because of this experience, I founded an NGO, KLCI, that helps children to do so, 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 and so. And so simple, like, I wasn't like, beating around the bush i was just great going straight to the point so additionally i founded an ngo that helped um you know 2500 3500 or 6500 children to develop life and 21st century skills that will enable them to solve the problems or challenges that they face within their communities um, and despite the fact that i had this upbringing you know i got a scholarship to you know study at the university where I competed with privileged students and I got, and graduated as the best student, you know, in my school with a 4.47 CGPA. So if you have like a good GP, G, GPA, that's a place to, you know, mention it. And if you're the best graduating student, that's a place, but it's also fine if you're not, you know, so if you're not the best graduating, what would you have done in that regard? Or if you're not, you could say you're the top 10% in your class or the top 6% of your class. For example, if you're the best female graduating, you can say I'm the best female graduating in my class. Or if you're the best graduating in your first year or not in your second year, your third year, in my first year, I happen to be the best graduating student and I happen to maintain top two or top 3% in my class. So like, it's just being creative with how, you know, you talk about your CGP or saying that you had a 4.0, you know, 4.0 CGP out of 5.0, which, you know, so communicating that, you know, and, those experiences that you've had has shaped your leadership journey and position for opportunity because you had access to that education, you're able to like, you know, um, you know, do something for your community and then you continue to expand that because of these experiences. So for example, in my case, I said before, because of such experiences, I've been able to sell, I've been 
able to get some certain opportunities, such as the Carnegie Youth Fellowship that allows me to do this, and all being also the and also being the only African to join, you know, the Peace First uh, Fellowship in Residence, where I get to help young people within Sub-Saharan Africa to create social change. Uh, I believe that uh, all of these experiences. Uh, so then you start targeting the course you want to do, right? In the master's program, you're already telling the reader that this is what I want to do. This is what, you know, and you believe that all of these experiences, you believe that this is the next step in your journey, right? You know, to do a master's program. And you believe that studying African international development will take you to the next level of your journey. You know, kind of thing like that. So you're like looking at what's the beginning? What, how do you end? And then you anchor everything together like that. So it's it's like I did, I wrote this particularly in 250 words. So it's going straight to the point and knowing what they want. So I've been able to touch academics, you know, by mentioning my GPA briefly. I've been able to talk about my story in just two lines or two sentences. I've been able to talk, you know, how I started teaching at the age of 15, despite growing up in that community. And I'm able to talk about other opportunities I've been able to get as a result of that opportunity and what I've been able to do with that opportunity constantly. And, you know, what I hope, you know, what my next level would be or what I hope to do next, right? So, okay, tell me, how else do you want to answer the question? Simple is done. Okay, yeah, thank you for that um, feedback. Um, so are you also saying like in this space, can they like refer to maybe key models in their courses or is not necessary to mention that? No, I mean, I didn't mention that, I didn't. Uh, it, might, it might work for other people, but I don't, I don't have to mention. Another thing that I did was, so when I'm mentioning my NGO, that I founded this NGO, I'll be like, I attach the link bracket. Um, so kind of like, you could click on the link to see what it is or what it means. So that could really help, but don't use link to spoil all your essays and you're just attaching link everywhere. I've seen essays where somebody will just keep attaching link. You know, nobody will read all the links. Look at the important link one, is okay brackets and ensure that they are not long link if they are long link put them in like you could actually put the link you could rename the link use bt link or something to rename the link so you know rename the link into something that is really small so that it doesn't take your word count as well because you don't want to link that will take all your word count Okay, thank you. So let's go to the second question. So the second question is saying, we want to learn about your track record as mm -hmm. a native leader. So yeah. tell us one current idea or project you're working on, which mm -hmm. clearly demonstrate this. So how should I, I answer that question? I know, I know some people have done many things. Yeah, and I know some people have done just very few things. And I understand that because you've done many things, you want to mention every single thing you've done, please don't. Um, look at what you've done. Look at the course you hope to do. Look at how relevant those two things are and how connected they are and pick the most relevant projects to the course you want to do. And if they are not relevant, you know, that's also fine. But just mention a project you've done. Don't mention many, many, many projects, except if a project is connected with each other. I think that's the only way you can mention many projects. So what the question is saying is that, tell us about a project you're currently doing or a project you've done, right? Um, so um, one of the ways to answer this question is using STAR approach. So situation, task, action, and results. Um, and yeah, and yeah, that's the way to answer the question, situation, task, action, and results. Um, so what is the situation? So the situation could be, is it a data? Is it an experience? In my case, I use the data. I didn't use an experience. So is it a story? Is it a data? Uh, is it um, a, yeah, is it a challenge? Is it something you've observed? you know like it could be different things you know so what's the situation of the project what's the task what did you do right what were the actions you took and what were the results so the results could also be a data you know there was 90 percent improvement in this um you know there was so 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 this 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 
uh, one of our success stories so 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 girl who did this right so let me give you an example from my essay so when i answered that particular question uh what i did was uh i gave it data and statistics that um, for example uh they are about um um you know they're about um, 200 million young people in sub-saharan africa uh, you know which means that we are the we we account for 20 percent of the population or even 60 percent of the population in the region um but most of the time these young people have ideas but they are not heard and they are not taken seriously so that's the data that's the introduction so through my work at peace fest as regional manager i am leading a project called the peacemakers challenge project where these young people have access to where i support these young people with mentoring funding and opportunities to solve those problems and to bring those ideas into reality i specifically conduct coaching calls blah 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 help them think through sustainability and you know i also so i mentioned everything that i do on the road and i give them 250 dollars to bring those ideas into reality or to create a change in their community and so far i've been able to support over 1500 young people with and distributed about forty-five thousand dollars grant to you know within 30 plus country you see the way i'm using data within 30 plus countries in sub-saharan africa so don't forget to also map numbers in your even in the question that i just mentioned you know don't forget to like talk about numbers in course of those questions you get um you know use quantify and qualify your essays is very very important so you know in more than 30 plus countries in sub-saharan africa and maybe probably by the end of june because then i was still running that project then so i said by the end of june <laughs> I would have distributed more and more. I would have distributed social so numbers, you know, leading to the social so, so impact of young people within the region. Um, and then it's done simple as ABC. What's the situation? So if you look at my if you look at my response now, you could see the situation where the data that I mentioned, there were you know, two hundred million young people in Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, leading to you know so 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 so, who you know who probably are not ed and you know something like that and i went ahead to talk about what i the project i was running that was like the task that is the peacemakers challenge and what was i doing what was my role on that project that is the action so when you get to the action like they're asking you don't say we it's you as the person i did this so what is your role within i know we is good but you need to understand the question where you need to use we and i so i'm not saying you shouldn't use we we is good but you need to be very conscious even if you will use we you could say that i and other or i and you know how I, I co created or I collaborated, or I co-authored, or I co-did this. I think that is important to, to know. Um, so yeah, I, you know, so I, then I mentioned to the task, specific task that I did, right? And then I went to the results, the impact of the work, like this is the number of the people that I have reached, uh, who have reached a certain number of impacts. And this is the number that I would have reached <laughs> by next year because it's a project that is continuous right um yeah so the truth is that most of the time when you're writing these essays they are like they are i feel like essays are just expression um so it's you thinking and expressing yourself um so it's very important to think uh, as you write and once you've written keep looking keep looking every word must count. Am I writing things that doesn't make sense? In fact, if you're writing something that doesn't make sense, you would know. Imagine you're not the, imagine, no, it's the truth. 
the only is <laughs> the only you start writing something that doesn't make sense you know that you're not making sense and then you remove it you know uh, uh there was this project then i went to meet the king of the community i spoke to the king the king said i should go back uh, you know blah 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 you don't need all those words so rather than saying i met with the king you could say i led community mobilization where i spoke to five key stakeholders within the community which include the kings and chief to do this and so you're done simple 250 words yeah, when I met with the king, the king said I should come back tomorrow. It didn't happen. Then I went next tomorrow. You don't need that in the essay. They're not asking you to do that in the essay. Maybe in the interview, maybe if they ask you for context, right? That's where you get to share details of those experiences. But sometimes in 250 word essay, you need to go straight to the points. You don't need all of those examples. Okay, uh, but I, I want to ask, you know, for some people, they are kind of confused because they've done like a lot of work, like yeah. you're able to like think to say, okay, I want to, you didn't even go with, I know you run an NGO, you didn't yeah. use an NGO example, you went to peace first example. Exactly. So same thing with others, they, they might have like, you know, sometimes you have a lot of experience, you don't mm -hmm. know which one you should mm -hmm. throw first. So mm -hmm. I'm asking you like, how do you think someone can like streamline the idea to say, okay, I think this is a better, or maybe I think this might give me a stronger edge or what do you think that can help someone yeah. yeah so it could be it could be ngo so for my essay i wasn't focusing on education i was focusing on youth development so i zone out everything on education and the example that relates more to youth development was peace first on my ngo um yeah so like when i got my scholarship i got like three different ones achieving mastercard and 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 idea scholarship in success and all my examples on other scholarships are totally different from each other because they were like different experiences so in tuning i was like targeting educational policy so all my experience from, from was mainly from my ngo most of the time um and maybe educational project that i have done um so for mastercard it was youth that was targeting development in relation to like african international developments like how young people can be involved in development issues and in leadership and how you know and in resource mobilization um so my responses were centered around young people most of the time though when i was talking about my life experiences i quickly put in my ngo because that was important and you know so like it's just tactics it's just thinking and reflecting on where does this fall in which one is the best story i have to use i know people that could you could use their ngo story and my ngo story could have fit me well as well i would just think which one is relevant to that particular question so he's thinking about which 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 um story is relevant to uh the course you want to study because i want to study african international development i noticed it was quite broad so i'm like i think my youth story would focus would reflect more because of my work in sub-saharan africa it doesn't mean if you're working in Nigeria, you can't still put the story there you know so it's more or less like reflecting on like what course do you want to do you know which area are you looking forward to you know more so it's more of like reflecting and thinking about about that um uh, and for example if you're a, a refugee for example or if you have disability you know um what, what project have you done for those people so within that community that you are in um it doesn't have to be, be a big project it could be a small project impact doesn't have to be big it could be small um so thinking about um or it could even be like a writing thing that you're doing maybe you created a small blog where you share things and you share story and you share opportunities why did you create that blog ask yourself that becomes your data and your, your situation um um okay now the situation okay what were your tasks did you do you created a blog and you uh, structure your your um, writing your content um, and you know you researched right maybe you were researching educational issues or engineering issues to educate more people about stem let's take for example uh, you start writing uh what were your results maybe you've written 
190 articles or 100 articles or 50 articles talking about STEM issues that are generated 250,000 views across the space of two years. If you want to be like me, I like to exaggerate things. I would say 52 weeks makes one year. Now in two years, 52 plus 52, 104 weeks. That seems like, and if you want to over exaggerate again, you could say days instead. So 365 days make one year and you 700 and something days. If you want to over exaggerate again, you could convert this to hours and then spend 100,000 hours blogging. Like I'm like I could I could switch things in essays like I switch things a lot, um. So you know and how the blogging has led you to be selected for an opportunity where you get to speak, to share with one thousand young people about a particular issue or about their mental health. Like, see, so people would tell me that Ahmed, eh, I don't have a story. I'm like, you do have a story just that you haven't think about the story yet. So it's very important that when you're writing your essay, you even pay more attention to reflecting than even writing. Some write without reflecting. And that's why you have a shitty essay. A good essay is an essay that has been reflected upon. And then you write them as you've reflected. So sometimes when I see essay, I will take my time to think. I'll be walking around, playing around. I'll be thinking. Then I'll come back and write because I'm thinking, because that's the part of the process. So thinking is part of writing. In fact, when you're doing your master's, it's a process, you know, you have to think before you write and put things down. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, everybody has, has um, a, a story to tell. It's just more or less like reflex. Even if it is five people you've reached out to, you could still tell the story, you know? So, and assuring that at the point of every of your essay, your why is showing, like they could easily see this is why this guy is doing what he's doing, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think you're not um, um, over exaggerating. The thing is, most times it's just how people see their work, like yeah. they just take their work like for granted, so simple. So you're still trying to like make your essay stand out and stronger. I like the idea of using that numbers instead of saying um, one year, like putting it in numbers, 52 weeks or in days. I think if someone just say, ah, oh, so much hours. It's just like, ah, they are really more interested in that. But yeah. then again, on this question, like again, like you picked one particular project. Okay, so for instance, what if someone like those numerous projects, let's say they run, reach out to school, they will feed out the poor, you understand? It's mm -hmm. one organization. So mm -hmm. are you saying, is this question that you should be specific on just one of those your projects or you can tie everything together? I, I, I don't know. What okay, do another thing, another way, another perspective. Um, yeah, you could choose one depending on your area of strength and uh, you could choose a combination of two or three of projects. So let me tell you how I, I've answered questions like this before. Um, I would say like, this is the situation, right? Maybe the statistic says that children were dropping out of school and to keep children back in school, there's a need to provide school input, a nutrition program and a mentoring program. So I would say that I created a trap trite project that uses three focused approach, such as school feeding program, blah, blah, blah. Finish. It's not hard. Uh, I like that. It just need for someone to be creative. It's not, it's, like... I've, write, I've written a lot. I've <laughs> written a lot. So it's not even my, like, it's just thinking. It's just thinking. Uh -huh. um, you could even say that um, I created, if, a, a feeding project accompanied with a mentoring program that helps children to develop so, 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 and so, and this is how you do it. Or you could even talk about one project and towards the ending to, to, to ensure sustainability, I added this program to support that program 
and then these are the impact. So there are numerous ways to write it. Interesting. Like I like that approach. I should come yeah. and take classes from you. Okay. <laughs> so we'll go to the third question. It's saying yeah. that um, mm -hmm. we aim to award MasterCard Foundation mm -hmm. Scholarship to individuals mm -hmm. who will benefit most mm -hmm. from the opportunity. So how would being a MasterCard Foundation Scholar support your development? personally and professionally. So how should they answer that question? They said who would benefit the most. I think that's the first thing you need to, to you know, look at. So you then read the criteria and that's why it's important that you read before you apply. Um, I think so many people, we have so many lazy applicants uh, who don't do their research and then just want to jump on essays and start writing rubbish. I'm sorry to say that you write rubbish, but um, it's very important that you uh, kind of like do your research uh, before you apply. So what are they looking for is the question. You know, um, they are looking for talented people, but who don't have the resources, you know, and who are from low income background. So you might probably be talented and you don't have the resources, you know, uh, and low income background is, could be defined anyway, <laughs> the way you want to define it based on you know um you might be from a middle class home where you can't even assess anything could, could your family be able to pay thirty thousand pounds as school fees or thirty five thousand pounds as school fees with accommodation like mastercard literally is investing like almost fifty thousand pounds or over on you as an individual to complete a master's program could you afford that money if yes is your answer don't have don't answer that question but if no is your answer go for the question um or go for the scholarship basically um yeah because i could recall there was there was a question like that around that finance where i talked about how i couldn't even afford like even me that i could not even afford to pay for some certain things and the money that i earn is for my basic living you know i can't afford a master's program but then I'm not saying that's the way you answer that question. Now they said personally and professionally. So how does it help you personally? So you could answer that question in two ways. One, you could tie, tie your personal development with your professional development together. They could be together and they could be separate. Um, so if what do I mean by tying them together? So for example, in my case, my personal goal, uh, one of the things that I'm looking for is credibility uh, to continue to amplify the work that I'm doing. And I believe, you know, with access to scholarships such as MasterCard and coming in from my community, I'll be able to have more credibility in my community to amplify that work and to continue to reach out, you know, to the people that I want to reach out to. Because when once people hear that I have a MasterCard Foundation scholarship from an institution such as the University of Edinburgh, it will open doors of opportunities for me being somebody who was born and raised in Makoko or who live in rural community, then that gives me an opportunity and those of opportunities to continue to scale the work and to continue. So again, it also helps me to gain upward social mobility, which then allows me to continue to create change within my community. So, and also continue to change my circumstances and transform myself and my family. So that's personal, but it's also somewhat professional. Uh, so there's a way that can be tweaked. Um, additionally, uh, the fact that um, access to resources, you know, is uh, access to resources, research uh, is a challenge and a gap. I'm not seeing all of you should start going and writing this in your essay or reflect on what you want. So <laughs> because all of a sudden people will start writing the same thing now um you have to think this is me thinking for myself i didn't answer that question during my time i'm just answering thinking in my head um so i'm trying to help you think uh, so you don't need to like probably then go and say like this is i made a study like this ah this is this is it um so i think that's one um yeah so look at it from there and also like there's a gap in you know research the fact that you don't have access to research, you know, because of 
you know, institutions in Nigeria, there's low research, like you can access to research, you can access to, you know, world-class libraries and how, you know, when you could even mention how you were studying briefly, you know, in, in school, how you had, you know, you had to struggle to access resources, but all these opportunities would then help you to access resources that allows you to understand this problem you're trying to solve and to scale and amplify your work and how that would help you to grow as you look forward to work in social, social sector or growing social, social sector or create social, social projects and how the fact that the scholarship would provide you an opportunity to network, um, access to influence philanthropy. So influence philanthropy is when you have access to the media, you have access to like top people. So you look at what are the people that the network would connect you with. Um, so for example, the Baobab Summit that happens in the program, right? How the Baobab Summit is a network of, you know, different young people coming together to solve issues and having access to top people, right? Ministers, head of states, influencers, you know, and then you mentioned how that would help you professionally and also personally, um, um, and how that would also help your career trajectory. Um, you also mentioned the fact that the placement-based dissertation research would connect you to organizations. These are things you should research yourself. I'm just telling you, like, these are things you should have. So I'm simplifying your work, basically, you know, and also how it will also connect you with lecturers uh, that would help you. Then you can mention him some lecturers in between that process, um, you know, um, and how those lecturers are working in this area and how you're also thinking of that area and how you would foster research collaboration between you and those lecturers and how that can lead to more opportunities. So for example, I said, I long to connect with Barbara Pompani. I've read her work, I've done so, 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 and so, and I look forward to learning about our research in this area where I'm currently working. Uh, and hopefully we'll also take a course, you know, something like that. So for example, I actually later took a course and later worked with her. <laughs> so it happened. So I'm not just making things out of my head, you know. Um, so you could mention one, so a couple of lecturers. Okay, organizations that it gives you access to. Uh, so what are the organizations on campus? Which one have you seen that you want to connect with that could help you professionally lally, that you wouldn't have access in Nigeria or you wouldn't have access with your work? So again, think broadly. You know, engineering, if you're doing engineering, the tools, the companies kind of think. Um, I don't know if I've answered that question, but um, I think this is the best answer I could give with regarding to that, to that question, basically. Yeah, I think you've touched it like personally and professionally. And I like the fact that you're being specific. So that's the thing I keep telling people, like you're mentioning names of organization. You think that you can work with during the process, and even names of individuals. So basically, you answer the question correctly. Um, so the next yeah, answer question... the answer the question is the question, right? You know, yeah. That's, yeah. Some people don't answer the question. Um, if you don't answer the question, you know, um, you would feel like even if you're doing a master's program, if you don't answer the question, it's going to be zero. So that's why it's important. To like, am I actually truly answering the question? Even after you've answered the question, look at the question again. And you ask yourself, am I truly answering the question? Um, when I was when I was doing my masters, I had a meeting with one of my, my supervisors, one of my tutors, and uh, it was like I made whenever I want to answer the questions, I paste the question in my wall and then I look at it as I'm answering the question. Even after I've answered the I, I keep looking at the question. I started using that method after then, and the essays I did with that really, really I went. I scored really high. Uh, and also like, even in life generally now, I kind of like write questions down whenever I want to ask some questions that are really tough. I'll write them down, put it on my wall and I'll start looking at them to actually understand the question. So it's very important to do that if you know you want to ensure you answer the question. So thanks for like mentioning, mentioning that. 
Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so the next question is the fourth one. And it's saying, um, we would like to find out more about your interest in further academic study. So please explain how the degree program you have chosen to study here relates to your future goals. Mm -hmm. So what specifically about this course would be useful for you? And if choosing an online degree program, please reflect on how you manage your part-time study with other commitments. So I think this number four has about three segments. It's saying um, your interest in your future academic, does your, how, how this relates to your future goal and what specifically you're looking for that will be useful for you. And then if you are going for the online, because I think the MasterCard has the online and yeah, the, yeah, the online on component. campus. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are going for the online one, how will you manage your part-time study with other commitments? So how can they answer this question in 250 words, like three, three in one? <laughs> it's, 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 it's the most interesting question. Um, yeah, it seems like it's hard, but it's already like broken down and you already have the elements. Um, so for me, you know, again, what's your intro, you know, what's the situation, you know, uh, why are you doing that course in the first place, why are you interested in the course, I think that's the first thing, you know, why have you chosen that course, um, so for me, I'm like, you know, me from engaging with like over 5,000 young people, I noticed that, or from engaging with over 10,000 young people, I noticed that these young people have brilliant ideas, but they are not involved in leadership, and you know, and development issues. And this is why I, I, I want to study African international development. So I want to, you know, research into how young people, or how um, to ensure how young people can engage in the development process and how young people, you know, can be involved, you know, through resource mobilization. I look forward to researching specifically into like, you know, like, you know, I believe that this program offers you that, especially, uh, because the Center of African Studies actually have produced churn 3,000 or have churned out 3,000 research that allows you to understand. So again, you, you must have done your research, right? That allows you then to look at papers and resources that could guide you through this process and that could help you through this process to ensure that you do this. And you also believe that the program also has, so you then list the program. The program has like the Edinburgh Award, which allows you to do this and this and this, you know, to complement your degree program. And, you know, so you, you then mention the opportunities in your program and the Center for African Studies have sessions, weekly sessions, and how those weekly sessions could help you. So again, you've talked about a problem of why you want that program. You understand that it requires research or this is not like to complement the efforts that you're doing or the work you're doing. And that's why you're interested in this program. And this is why this program does this. Because this program centers on this, you build this knowledge, knowledge and knowledge through this program. Uh, in fact, there's, you know, you're more interested in a particular course and blah, blah, blah. You could even bring back the placement based because the placement based dissertation then gives you a practical knowledge. And then this will prepare you for your short term and long term goal. And then you can say upon return, you know, for the first five years or for the first six years, you will go back to your NGO you go back to your organization or you start to so so and so. Yeah, so in my case, what I said, I'll go back to work with peace first, where I get to raise significant resources to put money into the hands of young people to create social change. Um, and the truth is that I'm not, I'm not a board member of peace first, right? And, you know, hoping to do, you know, that in a way. And uh, at the same time, I've kind of like raised money for young people even after that you know, to be a crucial change or to do things of their own. And I'm like, I've done that really. So, um, so, and uh, on the long term, I look forward to engaging um, donor-based organizations such as UNESCO or UNICEF, where I get to work as so, 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 and so, to increase youth participation in social change, right? So, simple, you're done. Your long-term career goal, you've mentioned it. Your short-term career goal, you've mentioned it. You've mentioned why you're interested in the course. You've mentioned why the course is important to you and what you have to gain in the course. And then, done. So if you're an online scholar, uh, probably you say, you could say that, um, uh, you could then mention that you already, um, you know, how would you balance, you know, both, you know, your work? Uh, you would say your work actually aligns you know, with the course you're already doing. And uh, if you're a very smart person, I hope you're smart. Um, 
I believe you are smart, I'm sorry. Uh, you could say, or you could mention uh, that you, uh, you already spoke with, you know, you already, you know, spoke with your employer, which has offered you, you know, five hours of, your, of, of their time, which, which has offered you five hours of their time to actually support, you know, you, right, basically. Um, yeah, so you could, yeah, you know, who, who, who has offered you five hours of their time so that you can learn every week. So now you have like, let's say five hours in the day. So five hours times five days, that is you have 25 hours, you know, to work, right, to study, right? And how that will contribute to the company development because once you work, you do this and this and this. So you could just bring all of those things together, you know, basically. This is for online scholars, please, if you're on campus, you can give any of this information. And again, this information are personal. They are just my personal reflection on this call. Like most of my answers, I'm thinking about them here and based on my response to my essay. So it's personal, it's my experience. So if you don't have to take it as this is the, it's not a golden rule, like go creative, like the parties agree with me if you want to. Yeah, thank you for that answer. Yeah, so you have to take notes to know that the difference is for the online and for the on-site. So if you are going to be on campus, don't go and start writing about online. They'll be like, this one, they, that's why they will start shifting out to say, this person is not even serious to understand the question. And something else too, again, I think that they can add is for online, if you are someone who have taken courses before online, you can even say, exactly. oh, I'm taking courses before online and I did well. So you can just add things like that. So we'll go to the last question, which is for those that are applying for on-site which is the fifth one. And he's saying the MasterCard Foundation is a great network of mm -hmm. diverse scholars. Mm -hmm. So one of the key attributes of this network is a commitment to inclusion. Yeah. So what experience do you have promoting social inclusion? What have you learned? So I, I think I can see like two different questions here. Or three. What, yeah, what, what have you learned? Start. Yeah, so he's saying that what, he said the, is a great network of diverse scholars, commitment to inclusion, and it's not asking what experience do you personally have to promote social inclusion? And then again, it's asking you, what have you learned? Yeah, good. So you, you need to first, you know, reflect again, you know, very important thing through that question really well. Um, uh, so if I were to be the one, how would I have answered that question? I never answered that question. But if I were to be the one, how would I, how would I have answered that question? Um, I think I would say first is I would look within myself. I will ask myself some questions. Do I have lived experiences of uh, injustice, and and do I have those lived experiences? So, for example, I'm a refugee. That's an opportunity to say that I have had lived experiences of being a refugee. If I have disability, I have lived experiences of that. If I, um, if, can you hear me? Is it clear? Yeah, but just make your voice a bit louder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I remember doing previous interviews, like I'm always on the go. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm a little bit calmer now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I <laughs> um, so yeah, if I have um, you know um, lived experiences, this is a place to mention it if I've gone through like you know, like you have a lived experiences of diversity you know, and inclusion, you know, something like that. Uh, because you were born in social, social community, it gives you a new perspective. You know, it gives you, it gives you an understanding of diversity. It gives you an understanding of inclusion. It gives you an understanding of what other people go through. And then you use the star approach to answer your question. Situation, task, action, results, and L. So now it's not star, it's STAL. S-T-A-R-L. Situation, task, action, results, and lessons answer that question basically so what is the situation for example oh in 2020 i happened to work in this community you know where i was posted for my national aid service you know and i noticed that they weren't speaking my language blah 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 i joined community groups to learn about their language you know something like that and how that helped you to do your projects and you know how you started listening to people to understand people better and how you under you understood that uh 
to learn, you have to listen. And how that has shaped your listening skills and how you look forward to like, once you, you know, you look forward to engage the scholars program by listening to your colleagues, by understanding their perspective to, to know where they are coming from. You know, you know, and you know, so you blend it together and you know, and that could be your lesson that one of the things you've learned is that you've learned to listen more and you've learned to respect the ideas of others. Right. So another thing could be, you know, for example, in my Red Cross job, I get to work with young people who are from the Middle East, right? Uh, North Africa, who are Muslims. And most of the time they don't like to hold hands. So when I'm preparing sessions, I don't prepare sessions that involve physical contact because I know that's gonna affect them. Right. So again, you know, like these are ideas, right? So just think about ideas. I mean, again, ensure you zero in your ideas into um, situation, task, action, result, and lessons. And I think that could help. Um, yeah, there's no straight way to answer this question. It's an open question, basically. And it's more or less like, you know, um, looking if you have lived experiences and seeing how that lived experiences has helped you to be open. And using an example to back that up with your experience working on a specific project or if, you know, or your experience, you know, engaging different and diverse people. It could even be going to a conference that involves a diverse people and how did that happen? How did you, you know, learn about, you know, inclusion and, and diversity there? Uh, yeah. I don't know if I've answered the question, but. Yeah, I, I think you've answered the question, but then I want to know, like, this is like star L. After using star push, and then you put the L, the lesson yeah, line. Yeah. So do, do you think that they can use more than one example in this scenario, or they should just think? Remember, they just have to. I, I like I like using one example. One example. Oh. Because because it's 250 words, <laughs> it's better to stick to one example. Don't if it is 500 words now, okay, another example. You know, or rather than saying another thing, you could say, and I've applied this experience into several other projects, such as mm -hmm. this, or into several other things. And I, you know, you could do that as well. So that could, but I don't think I don't, I'm not, I mean, if you want to use two stories, I'm not, you know, uh, I mean, I'm not the one to, to judge basically. So it's very important to like, if you think two stories works for you, fine. But personally, I wouldn't advise that. That I would advise um, somebody to use, um, yeah, one, one story or one example, one experience. That's, or if there are multiple examples that you think you can use, but you, you need to like, you need to decide what is the anchor of your response. What is the main point of your response? Yeah, you know, which one do you need to build? You know, your response on each story um, and. Maybe you could add one line of other things briefly that supports that example and then mention the lesson. Yeah, thank you for that answer. And just to add to that, I'm thinking if I'm from Nigeria, like basically, don't even you don't have to think far. First of all, Nigeria is a multi-ethnic country. So you can even think around that to think about, oh, in school. The normal time, like we have these things, but we don't even know that yeah. we have this example. Yeah, exactly. We're thinking exactly. something far, something different. So yeah. I mean, you have classmates from different um, parts of Nigeria. You use that as an example. We talk about NYC, you've served in a different community before. Exactly. Or if you have some of attended fellowship, I mean, you work with people from other countries. So just sit down and reflect. I remember what he keeps saying, sit down, reflect on your experience. You already have all these things in you. It's just for you to like take the time to sit down and start working yeah. on your application. Yeah. Okay, so we've answered like the, the five essay questions. So we'll now move to the online question. So before I move to the online question, uh, I think you have to like make your voice a bit louder so that, yeah, because it goes. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't even okay. know. Okay, I forgot this way, like when you put that extra effort for them to hear your voice. So we'll start the online part. You see why I brought Ahmed here? Like I call him my mentor. Like he uh, has no. yeah, you, you know you're my boss. Like he oh, has he has every details, you know, gives you tips and strategy, you know, on how to answer this kind of things. And so if you're watching, like drop um 
comment so get to know and um, what we took out from the section i've not subscribed to the youtube channel you should subscribe so we'll start with the online question now and i think that there are diff this kind of this year's question a bit different from the ones that you answered before i like how you are bringing the creativity to this so for the online one so they have about three I think four different courses. And so they have question per the course. So the first one I saw here is for international development. I know you work around this area and it's asking, please tell us about a recent trend in development that seems most exciting to you mm -hmm. and explain why you want to study it. Please draw on your professional or personal experience to answer. So this is for someone who wants to do the online international development program. So in addition to the other question, you will answer this, but if you're not doing online, you don't have to answer this question. So Ahmed, how do you think creativ creatively someone can answer this question? Yeah, it's, it's you know, so what are the, what are the current trends, uh, you know, debates that has been happening uh, in international development and how does it relate to you and how does it relate to your story and your experience and your work? basically. Um, so I think that's the thing to think about first. So if you ask me on top of my head, now, if we mention several development problems or challenges that are happening now, one is COVID-19, which has happened. But we are still suffering from the effects or the aftermath. And it's not that it's going anywhere. It's still there. Uh, you know, how has it made people out of school? You know, and how does it exacerbate the number of us school children, basically? Um, how is it relevant for people to develop digital skills? Because when COVID happened, many children were out of school and they could only use, they don't have the digital skills to like cope with online classes. Even parents were struggling. Uh, what happens to the ed sector? What were the changes that happened? So, um, and what did you do as an individual based on your personal story, based on your experiences? What did you even face as a family yourself during that pro process, what were the challenges? You know, what's your, you know, I'm not praying that bad things should happen, but where, you know, wh uh, what happened to your parents, you know, uh, because you don't have access to social protection system, you know, what happened to your grandpa, what happened to your dad, you know, were they really from work, or, uh, you know, uh, so what happened to you, what happened to your siblings, how did they cope? So again, you need to think about those stories, basically, and then reflect on them. Another current challenge that happening is inflation, local inflation, because of the cost of living, you know, this really cost of living crisis happening in different parts of the world. I mean, Nigeria is currently struggling, you know, with inflation at all. Uh, so how is that affecting poor people? How is that affecting even your work as an individual? How is that affecting the people you're reaching out to based on the work you're doing? Because I assume if you're studying international development, you must have been working in the area of like, you know, policy, charity, and all of those, you know, how did that even affect policy? If you even remember during COVID-19, one uh, also member of House of, uh, uh, also one, a member of the, uh, the, the National Assembly, uh, you know, was saying that, uh, or, you know, a member, yeah, was saying that, oh, let's them, we need help. Let's go to the, you know, let's, you know, let us go to the foreign people <laughs> to help us. Those are debates that happens in international development, basically. Foreign aids, development, you know, and how do you want to shape those debates? What are your personal experiences around that? And what are the stories to back that up? So look at cost of living crisis, look at, uh, you know, food crisis, you know, planting, you know, farmers, you know, uh, agriculture, climate change. Another thing, recent issue, flooding in Nigeria, you know, about uh, 1.5 million people uh, were displaced, internally displaced. That becomes a crisis as well. So you have climate refugees. Uh, about, uh, you know, we had about uh, 600,000 property lost, about 600 people died. Uh, you know, so then you start thinking of those debates and how climate could, you know, lead to poverty and then makes you to be stateless and, and you know and displaced right and how your this is what you've done or this is what you're already doing and this is how the research you will do will help shape policy issues around that thing or around that development issue 
that you're trying to solve. There are many examples I can give. Yeah. That was really interesting. So at least now someone who wants to study international development, you have idea of different area on how to like tie. Even, even somebody who wants to do food security. I've mentioned mm -hmm. how agriculture, climate change could even affect agriculture as well. Flooding mm -hmm. cleared, you know, affected so many farms, affected so many crops. It became a, an emergency, right? And it became a food security issue. So, yeah, you know, the thing about international development is that you can actually tie it to a lot of different things. It's just you yourself, just be creative to see how you just link to one particular issue that you want to solve. Don't, because it says here that you should be specific if I'm right and say the one that excites you the most. Exactly. Not you now going to, um, Start talking about all the problems. You can't solve all the problems. I know people make yeah. that mistake. They will talk about education. They will talk about food. They will talk about climate. They will talk about women. The person really the will be confused that what exactly are you trying to solve? Exactly. Speak one issue and stick to it. Okay, so we'll go for someone who wants to study the global food security and nutrition. So the question is, we are interested in your passion for food or agriculture. So, so please tell us, what excites you about food and the experience you have had around food or farming that relates to your desire to study food security? So how do you think someone can answer this question that wants to do online global food security? Yeah, and I, I think the, the first thing I would say that I would just give a caveat that this is not my, my area, um, uh, but I have an idea that will help. It's not my area, but I have an idea. Um, um, again, look, looking at that, um, one of the ways I have to, like, if you learn storytelling, I tell stories a lot. Um, so if you learn storytelling, uh, one of the things that I've, that I've learned, there's what I call CCO method. So it's challenges, choices, and outcomes. And you can use that to even write your, your essays, basically. Um, so what were the challenges you faced as a child? Um, what were the challenges your family faced? What were the challenges people around you faced? So put that in the context of food. Uh, so were you eating properly good meal and good nutrition meal? Uh, you know, were you sharing meat in the house or you weren't even having meat at all? Did that affect your growth in school and affect your education? Um, um, was there a time where something happened in your community where you know there was lack of adequate rainfall, and then because you're from a farming farming background, it affected the produce and that affected your family, uh, you know, and that affected you to go to school and how you know when we don't address food security, it affected other issues and it's other issues. Um, so then you look at what are those challenges that you face as a as an individual. Or people within your community, or as a child, or some, or, you, or one of your family members has faced. You look at that, and you then look at what choices did those things lead you, led you to, right? So the choice could be that because you faced that issue, you started an initiative to start solving that problem, or you start talking about it, or you start doing advocacy, right? So you then talk about the choices you've made, and what were the outcomes of those choices. The outcome could be that you know you're now working with FAO to design so 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 and so program, um, which would complement you know which has prepared you to want to take this course on global food security blah blah blah. And then that leads to this and this and this and this outcome, and this is what you have to study. Finish is done, so you could bring your responses towards that. So I'm not an expert in your field. I feel like if you're doing this course, you're an expert. But I've given you a way you can answer the question, basically. Oh, thank you. You see what I'm saying? Like, I just learned something and I wrote it down. The challenges, choice, and outcome, the CCO method. See, I too am even learning. <laughs> okay, so the next one is for someone who wants to study the global challenges. And the question is, please tell us about a global challenge that seems most interesting to you and explain why you want to study it so please draw on your own 
professional or personal experience mm -hmm. to answer. So this one is for global challenge. That, uh, something that, that seems most exciting, why you yes. want to study it, but then the person should draw from their own professional or personal experience. To it's, answer it's, 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 it's the same way with international development. Yeah, so yeah. there is no like global challenges, international developments, they are quite aligned. So it's still the same issue you talk about. Uh, yeah, so if, even the one for carbon management, say the same thing. The question is tell us the technique, draw your experience. Yeah, so I think a, the tips that he has given, even yeah. for health, he said, yeah. what does one health mean to you? Why do you think? Okay, so let me ask this one. For the one, this is the last one for the online course, which is one health. He said, why does one health, what does one health mean to you? And why do you think an interdisciplinary approach to health is important? Draw on your own professional or personal experience to answer. You know, there's this interdisciplinary approach that someone might see that like, oh, this there's this big word. So how do you think they should answer this question here? Mm. Uh, so the, the, the first thing is uh, you need to define uh, what does one net means. So I feel like if you don't even know what one net means, you should even apply for the course in the first place. Um, so I think, um, yeah, and it, it's a combination. It's like a combination of approach and it's a created approach, a defined approach towards providing health care for people, not just people, but animals as well. Uh, so you it's more of like you know this interdisciplinary you know, bringing health like integration of health into like so you so you could you could be like maybe you're thinking of community approach you're thinking of collective approach you know when somebody's sick and then they go to the hospital you're thinking of preventive approach you're thinking of different perspective to health like unifying approach you know you're even looking at the interrelationship between animal and man uh, all of those things. So, like, I'm not an expert in that field, so I don't know anything. So, I'm just trying to share. So, you know, so what are the experiences you've had? Again, the same way we've answered all the other questions, basically. These are ways you could use to reflect on the answers. But I don't think I'll be able to comment a lot on this particular question because it's not my field, but I hope the least you have said could, could help. Yeah, thank you for like giving strategy. I know that you're king of strategy. So it just lets for you, you are the one that know why you want to choose a particular course. So sit down like with the things that he has said to like draft your own voice. The thing is don't copy or because he said this, you say I must write my essay using this way. When, by the time you start following, is it formula or you think if you use the same thing someone has written before, we'll make you get a scholarship. That's a lie. They've seen, all sort of application before and they know when you are not having your unique voice they know that ah, this person that connection is not there so you will not get it so just get an idea on how to like draft yours and make your own um, your own application unique and special so thank you Ahmed for the question I just would just ask some other questions so I'm thinking about someone like you know they've listed the kind of courses that um, the MasterCard is offering here yeah. but maybe during their undergraduate study they studied, for example, maybe somebody studied English and the person is interested in international development, not BSc English, and wants to go for master's international development. Do you think this scholarship is not for the person? It has to be what he did during your undergraduate or if they want to switch, they can switch or how can they be creative? I don't know. They can what switch. Do you about they, it? they can switch. I did human kinetics. But did you see? Yeah, I did human kinetic education and I studied African international development in my master's. Did you see me mentioning it? Yeah, at all. No. So it, nobody cares. Uh, so far, your field experience relates and aligns. That's it for me. My field experience is in international development. Uh, my volunteering with Red Cross and all of those things to international development. So uh, my work in, region, in the region, international development. So I think my academic work doesn't really. But my GPA is part of it, so uh, so I mentioned my G G GPA, and I mentioned the course. But I, I, you know, I was very glad to stand for this course. So, like, your experience is different from your academic grade. Um, so sometimes it's not even needed throughout the year. So like, there's no if it connects for some people, fine. But if it doesn't, there's no need to mention it at all. Like, I didn't even mention it. Like. Except from when they said, oh, what course did you do in your bachelor's during the eligibility? I mentioned it. Uh, what was your GPA? I did it. That was all. That was the end.
Um, and then where I mentioned that I was the best graduating student for social support for point four seven CTPA. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so I don't think it's it's a uh, yeah I don't think it's needed. Like, I mean, if you're doing international development, I have several volunteering experience. If you if you study English, I have several volunteering experience in um, development. Like, I don't know why you have to put that in your essay. Why would you have to cause problem for yourself? But it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter what you study. It's you that know what you want, what you want to do, and why you've chosen the course you want to choose. Um, Although for some people they could ask in the interview that why have you decided, and then you give examples of how, why that's more of your passion, right? I know somebody who is running an NGO who does a lot of development, you know, education, but did sustainable engineering mm -hmm. because they wanted to create a business that mm -hmm. you know um, helps solve um, electricity problem in the country using renewable energy. And then they did sustainable energy and they had mechanical engineering in their bachelors. Um, so they were able to connect that together and how maybe their development experience gives them the understanding and the rigor and the um, background of creating such business and why the masters that they want to do will give them the research knowledge and then complement what they've done in their bachelor's degree. Yeah, interesting. I like that because like me, I have a science, like my bachelor's degree was in science and I'm doing my master's in social science. So the way I kind of like, I have to tell the story Well, I switched from science to social science. So maybe they could add that to the application, just one line to say, because of this, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that most important is for every course you do, apart from the academics, you pick life skills from there. Maybe when you were studying English, did you learn public speaking? Why not switch it to say, oh, I studied English public speaking. I've used it to solve this problem of this. So you see, you can pick like the transferable skills within any course and apply it to another course. Is that not so, Ahmed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, really perfectly great. Like, for example, when I was, I remember when I applied to Chimo, um, and I had to talk about my previous course because I was doing education. It was easy. I studied mechanics education, and I did some courses in education because I did I did so many courses. Like they were like half of my courses were in education as well. So I picked the courses I did in education there, and I put it in my essay. <laughs> so like I I which has given me uh, grounded me you know to understand the basics of education policy and foundation and all of those things like. It's just being very creative and you know knowing what to say and which one is relevant, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like for me, me science for social science. I'm like, okay, during the science, I saw this problem, and even though I want to study social science, like all my work has even been around that area, and I take courses, you know, fellowships. So with that kind of thing, they will know that okay, yeah, even though this person is changing field. We believe that this person will be able to like adapt. But I think I want to know for MasterCard, are they like uh, specific on GPA to say it must fall within this criteria? I know some scholarship are for first class or the two one. So can someone with a two two think of <laughs> oh it's for two from first class and two, two one. one? Yeah, it's for uh, people with first class and second class of uh, once you have a two two, you'll be you'll be taken away right from like you will be rejected right from the eligibility. So oh, once okay. you're filling the eligibility requirements, it's already, you already asked. Um, so okay. Yeah. All right. So people know that now. Okay. And and then I want to ask you like, so during, okay, let me ask you first before I ask you the other question. So of all the scholarship, because I, I know you have various scholarship offers, why did you decide to go for the MasterCard? Oh, interesting question. Yes, and then also at the University of Edinburgh, because I know that for MasterCard, you can study in Canada or study in other places. Then so why MasterCard and why did you choose the University of Edinburgh? Interesting question. Um, I think I think for MasterCard, um, um, I, I think it was a lot, lot of things when I was deciding. Uh, I think I because I studied education in my, my bachelor's, um, uh, the other, like my achievement was educational policy. 
uh, uh, why uh, MasterCard was African International Development. Uh, and I felt that uh, I wanted to build more regional knowledge, I wanted to understand more about the continent. Um, I've already studied education in my bachelor's, I work in education, and I believe we have several policy debates like, well, why not do something that is quite different? that you could learn from, and you could still do education. So when I was in African International Development, my focus was on education. So I did like, took a course in edu- I went to take a course in School of Education. So I did a course in Educational Policy and Policy School of Education, and then I have a policy analysis there, which kind of like helped my work. Uh, like I've written a policy analysis, I, I did a policy analysis of the UBE, you know, Universal Basic Education. Uh, if you go to my link, you'll see it there. It's also published on South Africa. Um, and it was a course that I did, like, and I still did a research on refugee education. And I worked with MasterCard on that as well. Like my dissertation, I, I, I did my placement with MasterCard Foundation in Edinburgh. And I wrote my dissertation on that topic. And that was what created an opportunity for me to work with refugee education in the UK. Uh, so like, and then I understand, like, then I broaden my experience of education rather than education for children on the South community, what of education for people with forced migration backgrounds. Um, and that depends my knowledge. So I think it was me wanting to try something totally uh, different, but still related to my uh, journey and my experience, and to also develop regional knowledge and also know more about Africa. I think that was one thing. I think the second thing was the parks, you know, was good, you know, laptop, every other thing, you know, other opportunities that he offers me. And you know, and the fact that Mastercard really wants me to succeed because I asked the scholar then, you know, it was like, hey, Hamish, you know, don't even think about it. It's Mastercard, you know, like, don't even think about it. So I think um, um, that was there. So I think it's very important to let people know, like, it's one like, if not the best, uh, it's one of the best scholarships out there that actually truly really wants you to succeed and will support you to your master's journey. I will continue to connect you with opportunities and continue to engage you. Um, yeah, I mean, I I don't need to tell you about the experience. Get it first, and then you see how you know this scholarship happens to take care of you. I mean, I'm not saying other scholarships are not great or they don't have great network. They do, uh, but I think Mastercard offers a lot, much more. Uh, and I also think that um, one of the questions that I didn't now I remember uh, the personal and professional question. <laughs> uh, I think it's also important to mention about the alumni community and how is it growing an online community and how you know, that's also an opportunity you're looking for to be part of, you know, and tap into that network. So that could be one thing. And seeing how you could partner and all of those things. So that could be one thing to add to the essay. I just remember now. Uh, yeah, another thing is, uh, I mean, like there are scholarships who have had really great network, like Chile has like a network since it's been existing since 1980, uh, I've been 1983, I can't remember the year. Um, so imagine the network that has built from the 1980s up until now. And when you look at the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship, uh, I think the scholars program started in 2006, I don't know. Edinburgh itself, for Edinburgh itself, it started like maybe 2016. Yeah, I think really? so. Really? Yeah, the scholarship oh. for Edinburgh, I think. Yeah, it was 2016, I can't remember if it's true or not. Uh, yeah, the first scholars arrived in 2016, I guess. So, um, yeah, I think I'm correct. Um, and, you know, like, when they are talking about an online in like 10, 20 years, I want to be named, <laughs> basically. So I think I want to be part of something like that, that is uh, deepening and growing inside an, an online network. Um, I think that aligns with my value. Uh, and the, there are some values that MasterCard talks about giving back principle, transformative leadership, that aligns with my value as well. I think you also need to understand that value as you write your essay. So MasterCard is very big on transformative leadership and giving back value. So you're not just getting the scholarship because they want to run away. You want to still stay committed to the work. Like I still work, even if I'm in the UK, like I still like I'm engaged fully, fully engaged in the work that I'm doing in Nigeria. Like, I'm so, so passionate. Like, I'm even in a Nigerian first before anything else. Um, I'm like, I was back, I'm deeply rooted in the work. And I know many scholars that I know who are extremely deeply rooted in that work as well. 
Um, so Mastercard is still limited and you know giving back to people. In terms of like Canada or UK, for me it's just the scholarship that were available to me and the one I feel like I can easily apply to. And I wasn't like, uh, yeah, I wasn't even looking at Canada throughout my scholarship application. It was just the UK. I don't know why. Um, and Edinburgh was just like, um, yeah, Edinburgh is a top school. Uh, when you look at Edinburgh, um, it's it's now that they have in Oxford and Cambridge, maybe I would have chosen those ones, but no. no. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I love the support I got in Edinburgh. The, the Mastercard. Uh, staff in Edinburgh, like the Mastercard Foundation staff in Edinburgh, they are really, really great and they are very, very supportive. And I would say Edinburgh is a top school. I mean, it's top 16 in the world. Uh, it's the um, top five in the UK and the best university in Scotland. And the Centre for African Studies is also one of the leading Centre for African Studies. And what's, what's, what a privilege, you know, to study in such institution and how sometimes when you just name that institution in your CV or when you just mention it somewhere, you know, the likes of Julius Nyerere, uh, former president of Tanzania, Izzy Gordon Brown, and many other people that are from the University of Edinburgh, like, come on. Uh, imagine being an alumni of such university, I think that's something to be proud of. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, obviously the research, the level of research as well, level of experts, and there are many things, basically. Yeah, I can I can really see like you're really selling MasterCard scholarship. <laughs> Maybe I should have thought about that. And I like the fact that they give what is just my head is oh, they give like the post post study, like after study, you still have allowance. I'm like, wow, like the scholarship has starts from the beginning to the end. Scholarship that will even pay for your passport. Like who does that? Yeah. Well, it, it's actually my a, passport expired. I got the money to renew it. To renew the passport when you were in the mastercard scholarship they gave you money to renew your passport when i was when i was um, coming because at the point of I was, when i was coming my like it was five my passport is like five months to get by with it so i had to i had to renew my passport and they paid for it that was really really interesting people should apply for the mastercard scholarship okay uh so i also wanted to ask that okay like you said so they do like the interviews so after this process of submitting the essays they have to do interviews yeah yeah you go to an interview yeah so what's the interview like because yeah the uh, one i've never i mean i mean obviously it's um basically again to get to know you um um and um, to confirm, you know, probably some of the things you've said in your essays, but again, it's just to know who you are, you know, to meet you basically, uh, um, nothing really, really deep. So it's more of like bringing your own experience to the conversation, basically. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I could recall even when I was having my proposals, even having conversation in the beginning, like, and the chicken in my background was, was sounding, you know, you know, in our <laughs> in my house then so <laughs> it was so funny uh, you know and it was yeah it was was a conversation and i really really enjoyed it um yeah uh, so yeah i think it's it's just conversation when you get that bridge you will cross people will cross it so get there first i think that's what i would just say to people basically <laughs> No, really, they want to know now, like when they get to the bridge. So is it like they ask the same questions? They ask the no, no, there 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 isn't any specific um question. Mm -hmm. It could be it could be anything. Um, but again, it's more or less like about your experiences. So again, about your story. I mean, if you've written that essay and you've got to that interview, like you've nearly nailed it. Like you're nearly um seventy percent in. Um. It's just for you to do the remaining thirty percent job by saying that this is me, this is who I am, this is you know, how I am, and you know, let the remaining do like let that do the talk, like let you do the talking basically. Um, yeah, and yeah, obviously some of the questions will come back. Why did you choose the school? Why did you choose the scholarship? Okay. So you should do your research. Don't be a lazy applicant. <laughs> Don't be a lazy applicant. Yeah. Okay, so is it like the interview? Do they have like an office in Nigeria or in this place? No, no, it's, it's online. It's phone it's call online. or through it's Zoom? It's online. It's oh, online. online. Yeah, it's an online interview. So, so must you show your face or through yeah. phone calls? No, depending on your circumstance. I mean, um, um, yeah, depending on your circumstance. I've seen people who have interviewed and they were like, yeah, yeah, their camera, they couldn't put on their camera because of some certain issue. 
that was fine. Uh, yeah, and yeah, if I think I had my interview on Skype uh, during that time, I think some others had their on Zoom. So depending, so I don't think yeah, this yeah, just ensure you're prepared. Like to me, I, I was already ready with my internet that day. Like there's a place I used to put my internet, my my fi there. It's somewhere on the top of my roof in the house. So I was like, it was there ready. <laughs> my laptop was fully charged for the day because there wasn't even electricity that day. Where I made sure my laptop was fully charged. I wasn't putting it on at all. <laughs> and uh, you know, just prepare so that there's no error or village people is the one doing me at this point. Ten minutes to the interview, I changed my I wore my shirt and I was just ready. So yeah, just be prepared, be relaxed and yeah. And then practice questions based on your responses you've given in your essays and just be there and go have conversation basically. Just be there. I think that's the best thing. Yeah. Mastercard is looking for how natural you are. And I, I think um, you don't need to start cramming answers and all. Just go on with yourself, honestly. Like, there's really nothing I can say here in terms of the interview. It's, it's uniqueness that they are looking for, honestly. Okay. Uh, you know, some people just want to know, like, you know, for others, you know, that, okay, you have like three people in the panel. So for Mastercard, is it like just one person talking? Yeah, to you? during my time, it was one. I think okay. for the previous sets it became two, so I don't know it, it, could, it could change. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's just yeah. I think for me, I just believe that when people cross, when you get out to that bridge, you will cross. It's basically. So, um, how many months or weeks, like after the interview, do you get to get your final verdict if you are qualified for the scholarship or not? Um, um, I don't know, but it could take a. Uh, I think for my time it was. Is it after you've done the interview? Yes, after the interview. Oh, okay. Like now, I know the scholarship deadline is for January. So, like, what time? Yeah, the, the time. The, 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 the timeline is on the website already. And okay, they, the timeline is there on when to do the interview. Yeah, yeah, and when they will get back to you. Like they, they actually strictly follow the timeline. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they don't. Yeah, the timeline is being strictly followed. So. And there are actually some of these responses, like the answers are on the FAQ as well, like they've answered some of those things in the FAQs. Um, yeah, so. Okay, so the final question before we let you go. Is... I'm already like feeling very hungry. <laughs> I know, I'm like so, so hungry. So um, just like give people mm. tips, like, you know, what has worked for you? like over the years that can help them people really need scholarships to further their study because not, not everybody can afford studying in the uk and how scholarship change makes a difference you can testify to that i too can testify to that others can testify to that so for mastercard some people are like no it's mastercard i want i want to be a mastercard scholar for life because once you're a scholar you're a scholar please do you have some other words that can help them in their essay, their interview or something so that they can win this scholarship? Yeah, I, I think the first thing is to believe in yourself. Um, you know, believe in yourself. Be, and if you're rejected, the people who reject you are not bad people. Um, if you're in their position, you reject people as well. They are human beings. You know, uh, work on your essays, keep doing the work. Like you're applying for the opportunity not because uh, you want to like, like you are applying for the opportunity. Like the opportunity is not the, it's not an end. It's a means to an end. It's a continuous process. So it doesn't mean you stop your work because you didn't get the opportunity. It continues to build credibility. Like the first time I applied for Mastercard, I didn't get it. And likewise, I applied for like you know um, nine other scholarships that year, about ten of them, and I didn't get any of them. Um, so you know. Then if I got three on the go, um, and one of the things were like my experiences in those scholarship, you know, uh, probably I wish I had all this kind of session, right? You know, um, well, my experiences then, you know, I learned the hard, the hard way, you know, I went, I learned, I reflected, how can I tell my story better? How can I improve upon telling my story? And that's the, that's the joy, right? You know, when you're able to learn through your mistakes, through your journey. So don't start beating the ground and saying, uh, we're not apply again. Uh, this is this people, 
and they are always selecting people that they know uh, they are always selecting people that are already working don't have that mentality you have to constantly learn through that process right and uh, i mean mastercard is like one of the best things that happened to me in 2020 because it, it really like a pathway and opportunity for me to be built you know to work with organization and to deepen my knowledge right so on on um, on uh, you know on development issues you know relating to education which is my core area and opportunity to work there you know i've always constantly come back to mastercard to do one or two things like that always been me coming back and many other scholars will testify how they've also gotten other opportunities through mastercard right as a scholar so yeah reflect make sure your why cut across your essay constantly like why are you applying you know why are you interested in the scholarship in the first place like think a lot reflect a lot like do a lot of reflection those are job and right reflect and think why am i why am i applying for this course why am i applying for this program read about the course read about the lecturers read about the you know the opportunities within the program within the course read about the opportunities the program offers read about the schemes within the school read about the center in the school what does it offer like go in detail do they have internal internal internship for their students do they have internal opportunities for their students how do you blend all of those things into your essay it's a combination like if you prepare you will see the results See, one of the things that I used to say to myself is that if I get rejected, uh, even if I would feel bad at times, one of the things that I've put in the work, I've tried. So don't submit a shady application or a bad application and saying that, oh, they rejected you. No, you submitted rubbish. It's the truth. But if you submit something great, if you submit something great and they reject you, you know that you put in the work. And that serves as a template for another scholarship for even a bigger or better scholarship or prepares you to have something to work on or build on when you're reapplying again. So don't say that, you know, I know people who write rubbish and then say they reject them. You know, you wrote rubbish. How would they reject you? You or you probably um, write three lines or five lines and then you come out and say that you've been rejected. No. If, you know, everybody will come and be crying on rejection. You need to know the quality <laughs> of the application before somebody starts crying about rejections. Somebody will say, I've gotten 50 rejections. I'm like, with three lines that you're writing in all of the essays and you're writing responses and you're not putting in any work. If that's the case, you're not rejected. You didn't put in the work. You've even been rejected before you, are, you submit already. So, <laughs> that is the truth. No, we need to tell ourselves the truth, you know. I think it's, it's something that people need to know. It might, it might be funny, but it's the truth. People submit rubbish. Um, so you need to work on, on, on that and, you know, find people to review. I think one thing that works for me where people, you know, um, you know, uh, find people, I can't review. I've done a lot of that already, like, in the past. So I might not be, I might not be in that capacity. I might not be in that position to review anymore. But um, you know, reach out to scholars who can review. Um, uh, reach out to um, um, you know friends. One of my friends actually looked at my essay, and because of my friend looked at my, like the friend has not gotten any scholarship. The person doesn't even know scholarship at all. But the person has always been reading my work, so I'm like, I can trust this person. She's really good. And then she read my work and she was like, okay, you know, and then put something together where I was stressing things like, oh, you could put this one together. And yeah, it really helped. And I spoke to like a scholar as well, we looked through it. In fact, the scholar didn't touch anything in my essay. They just looked through it and then they like, kind of like, had a call with me. And they were like, oh, I think it could be better here, it could be better here, it could be better there. And I made those changes. Like that night immediately I made my changes. I got the feedback, I picked my pen and paper and I was writing the feedback. Um, so take all the feedback you could take, you know, from people. Um, um, and if you could do answer, you believe in yourself. I know people didn't even do their essays for anybody to look at. They got the opportunity as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is helpful, but um, I mean, I'm not sure. Thank but, you, but, Mike. But just, just believe in yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself, believe in your ability. Make sure your wife goes through. Don't be a lazy applicant's research. Mm -hmm. 
research, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and test of work. All right. Thank you so much. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, you are the dog. Like, I'm so grateful that you did this. You know, you have my organ. Like, you also, like, look through my application. So thank you so much for all you do and how you support what? other yeah. people. As aspire other people so I, mean, I know like you you run a blog or something so so tell us um the blog and you also give me the link i'll post i'll post the link and i know you also have like books which are very relevant so where can they find this book sure, the titles yeah. Yeah, yeah so tell us about uh, that and i'll also get the link and post them too oh thank you uh thank you so much for this free free publicity i really appreciate it yeah i mean my yeah my blog uh yeah, escapefactorinspirers.com. Uh, a couple of stories there. <laughs> I hope the stories are relevant to you. Um, and yeah, also on my social media, I've written a couple of articles as well, including my name, Ahmed Kareli Alabi. And uh, yeah, my book is on Amazon and it's on Roving Heights. So I have written two books um, The Africa I Dream to See and Five Years, Ten Lessons Like Those. So that's my recent book and it's on Roving Heights and on Amazon. And then you can get it. In fact, it has some of my stories of scholarships and all, like, it has, like, if you want to enter into my story and why, and then know where I'm talking from, what perspective I'm talking from, I think those books will offer you, like, lessons to my stories and experiences and why I do what I do. And, and it, it, actually, that's my scholarship. It's as my scholarship experience and when I'm studying as well, like, what were my experiences as well. It has its capacity it there. Um, so, yeah, that could really help. Thank you. So I'm going to get the links and I'll yeah. post them. And yeah. so you have to like get the book so that as you're watching the videos, reading the book, like kind of expand your mind to know like how to like tweak your work. I want to hear success stories. So when you win the scholarship to us, come and drop the comment to say thank you for this video. Um, like you helped me shape these ideas and things like that. So thank you so much, Ahmed. And drop your comment and subscribe to this channel. Have a great day. Yeah. Mm-hmm.